government officials insist that this is an isolated incident. Yes, the task is for you. We will continue to keep you informed as this story unfolds. Hello everyone, welcome back to Go Indie Now International. Today we're talking with Poppy Kuroki, who is a professional ghostwriter and editor. She loves books, Dungeons and Dragons, and playing video games. She currently lives in Enoshima, Japan, with her husband and dreams of owning a dog. Welcome, Poppy. Can you do a little bit more detail about yourself? Uh, hi everyone. Um, as Jin said, I live in Enoshima, Japan, which is near the beach. It's lovely. Uh, I've been in Japan for about six years. Um, I, my main job is ghost writing and editing uh, books, and I also do a bit of teaching as well. Um, nice to chat to you guys. So let's go ahead and get into, into it right now. So how have you been handling the current situation, you know, with the whole um, beer virus that, that's been out there and <laughs> <laughs> can't, mention, can't mention his name for some reason, or people will block the video. So <laughs> how have you been handling it? Oh, I've actually been really lucky. Like a lot of people, of course, have had their lives turned completely upside down. My father lost his job and a lot of people lost their jobs and they're, you know, people they love to. But compared to everyone else, I've been really lucky. Like my job finished uh, like naturally in March and then I started doing ghostwriting full time. And obviously you don't have to commute or, or go outside to do that job. So for me, it's been fine. Like of of all, I think I've been in the top 5% of people <laughs> who oh. had an okay experience in this so yeah I've been I'm completely blessed when it comes to this year very good very good um, what do you How do you? what do you do oh thank you very much um yeah I've been holding on um summer's been a bit tough but mm -hmm. I'm filming a documentary so where actually I get behind a racing wheel and I'm drifting drift racing so it's a pretty fun experience there but yeah I've been doing good I've been working hard and um, now that all the tough stuff is behind me, I'm moving on. So that'll be fun. But let's get into your ghostwriting. Um, how many people have you ghostwritten for? Um, what's your main point for ghostwriting? Um, let's see, how many people have I written for? Quite a lot. Maybe at this point about 20, maybe 30, something like that. Um, I get a lot of like people coming back. So the first person I ever ghost wrote for, I'm on his second book now. So a lot of the time it's returning clients, which is great because I know they're cool and they know I'm cool. So I feel better hey, what, about that. What do you do for ghostwriting? Do, we, do I just give you a stack of my notes and you write the whole book or what is it? It really depends on the client. So it's, I only do fiction. I don't do nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had people send me the entire outline with every scene and even dialogue. And I've had people send me half a page of notes and say, I'll make this into 10,000 words, please. Um, you can do whatever you want with it. Cool. So it's really diverse. That's why I like returning clients more because I know what to expect. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your book. Yep. So <clears throat> my first, my novelette, A Bard's Lament, came out in the end of, at the end of August. And it's about, uh, as the title suggests, it's about a bard. She's called Ella. And she hides codes in her music for spies to decipher. Um, mm. And I got the idea from that from, you know, that feeling of like, you know, bad stuff is happening around you, but you can't do anything about it. Yeah. So it kind of came from that. She, she's poor. She's in a lot of debt um, that their mother left for them. Her sister's a prostitute working in the same tavern. They're like at the bottom of the food chain above mm -hmm. slaves. So her, the only thing she can do is uh, 
do her part in passing along like messages between people and try to undo the crimes of her her village now did you take a lot of this effort and into writing this character from your D D experience no actually i only i've only been playing D D for a short time way after i wrote a bard's lament um really? yeah D is separate uh <laughs> for me but i know a lot of people do write stories based on D D campaigns which i understand that they can be so much fun um but no uh, the inspiration for ella actually came from a youtube singer really? uh, I don't know if you've heard of Maluka. Mm. She does a lot of like Skyrim songs and video game songs. Let, let me see if I can. Long black hair, very pale skin. Yeah, uh, she's from Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, her. Like... I, I, I found that. Um, <clears throat> you know the song for The Witcher? Yes, yes, she did um, that one. Did she? Yeah, yeah. I saw that and I, I found her because I was listening to the original writer of that song and her video popped up. Really, really good voice. Priscilla song is that the one with the bard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I love that's one of my favorites. Yeah, so she's really nice. Even though I mean she's pretty famous now, but like a year or two ago, she would like um, you know respond to all her fans and stuff, and she just seemed like such a nice person. So I had like that feeling I mentioned before, and mm. Maluka, and then it kind of became uh, the story. Very good, very good. I, I <laughs> like it. I like it when famous people actually take the time to respond. Um, there's um, <clears throat> uh, Henry Rollins. I he messaged him a while back about acting one of my films, um, the film that I, that actually is behind me, The Line, and he was very polite and he responded very clearly and precise um, about the reasons why he couldn't come out and do it. Um, part of it is because he was working on a couple of films that I ended up seeing later, which are awesome films. I, you know. And on top of that, he said he's too old to be running around through the forest. <laughs> Wait, do you know who Henry Rollins is, or am I too old? Um, I've heard his name, but I can't, I can't um, get his face up in my mind. Yeah, um, if you if you watch the original movie Jackass, um, there's a there's a scene in it where Steve is getting a tattoo while he's riding around in a Humvee through the desert. Steve, yeah. uh, Henry Rollins is the that. driver. Oh, okay, all right. So um, I, yeah, I probably do know his face. Yeah. Yeah. He used to be a hardcore yeah. rock and roll kind of person, 80s, you know, the, the kick your teeth in kind of rock and roll. Then he did, um, then he did um, some movies. Um, one, of the, one of the most famous movies he's done was Johnny Mnemonic. So he was the doctor in Johnny Mnemonic, very hyper. Then he did uh, stand-up shows. He did music with, um, what's his name? Uh, Captain Kirk, um, William Chatner. He oh did, wow! He did a CD with with William Shatner. Then he he started doing a lot more movies. One of my favorite current ones is He Never Died. It's about um, Cain and the the life of Cain in modern times and what he's dealing with kind of thing. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's nice when people take the time. They're not like too busy and important for their fans or for people trying to talk to them. Oh, really I makes- I agree. I liked her like way more after she was replying to tweets and YouTube comments and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, what what I don't like though is, and this is something that I learned from listening to uh, William Shatner and before he died, Leonard Nimoy, is that they get tired of the fans asking them for stuff rather than just having a conversation. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people, that entitlement comes in from fans. Like, this is us. You have to respond to me. Why not? Right that self-centered kind of thing. Um, and we start to build that distance off. But now that you're in Japan, where we are as foreigners in Japan, we're a little bit more isolated. Um, and you have a blog here, Poppy in Japan. What's your opinion of Japan? I mean, I've always liked Japan since I was a kid and I always wanted to come here. And then once I got here, I sort of felt like, oh, this is where I want to live. And I do miss home sometimes, Mm -hmm. but when I go home, I miss Japan. (laughs) So I'm not like the starry eyed, like, oh my God, Japan's so epic. Ah," But I'm like happy here. You know what I mean? I still, I'm still in love with the country Mm. and I probably will remain so. I get asked this a lot and I give a superficial answer. Very few people know my real answer. Why? What's your real answer? My real answer is um, I've always felt that I was Japanese very simple 
um, I felt that my soul, my spirit, who I was as an individual was Japanese to the point where when I moved to Japan, I felt this was my home. I did not want to move back. Yeah, I, I feel the same. Like you belong here. Yeah. I don't think I'm Japanese, but like I feel like I belong in Japan. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I, I got my citizenship about six years ago. So Good job. it's not hard. It's not hard. Anyone out there, if you're going to become a Japanese citizen, it's not hard. You've how how do you? Can I ask? I know oh, you yeah. have to be here a while, but sure. No, actually, you don't. Uh, you do and you don't. Um, I know it's a double answer. <laughs> so anyone out there who's going to be watching this, it's easy. It's very easy to become a Japanese citizen. Number one, you come here legally with a proper visa, right? Number two, you don't break the law. <laughs> number three, you pay your taxes every year, and number four, you're here for five years. Right. That's it. After that, after that, you just have to know the place to go. And the place you go for to become a Japanese citizen is not the place where you get your visas. It's oh, another right, place okay. called Home Kyoku. And every city has one. The application process is long, tedious, and very, very repetitive, but that's intentional because you have to be sure you want to be. Right? Um, but I'll give you more information afterwards. It's, it's actually sure. very, very easy. Um, let's, let's I actually have a things. question for you, though. Sorry. Oh, hey, um, come on. Are you, where are you from originally? I was born in Mexico, raised in California. Um, I'm more American than Mexican because mm -hmm. uh, of where I was raised. I do speak Spanish fluently. Um, and how I was raised, I'm a 80s and 90s kid, which means I'm before the millennial overparenting that happened in the U.S., and I think a lot of the issues right now in the U.S. are because of overparenting, not because of how society standards are. I was raised in California and um, during the 80s where, my honest opinion, I actually experienced actual real discrimination. Um, I'm talking, you know, the little check mark on the top of your application form to show that you're not um, a certain color. I'm talking about being allowed into university, even though my grades were good, being allowed into university because I was a certain color, which is why I'm anti-discrimination. Mm -hmm. And here's where it gets fuzzy. I'm anti-discrimination. I am not anti-racism. I don't care what people think about me. Right. They can call me whatever name they want as long as they don't discriminate. That's it. It's very simple. Don't discriminate. Believe what you want. But yeah, I was judge them one by their character, not exactly by what color they are. Exactly, and if you're gonna get a job, except like for you, like um, there's a writer, and I'll, I'm gonna ask your opinion about this. There's a writer, and this happened a couple of years ago. In fact, I think it happened right about the same time that the Trump meltdown happened. Um, and it is a Trump meltdown. People want to change the system. That was just stupid. But anyways. Um, there's a writer who is writing a book, a famous writer in the UK, who wrote an African character. And his publisher told him not to publish the book, apparently, because he himself was not that skin tone. Mm. It yeah. irked me so much because they're judging him on his skin color, not on the quality of his work. Yeah. So, as a ghost writer, in the current era, would you be adverse to writing someone who is not your skin tone? Absolutely not. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm just, just, like, it, it just shows the craziness of our times that you even have to ask that question, you know? Isn't it? Isn't it? It's insane. Uh, but yeah, I was raised in California during the Cesar Chavez um, migrant protests. Um, and like most, let's say, Latin background individuals in California, we believe in proper immigration, you know, coming through the proper paperwork. Like my mother, who's an American citizen, filed the proper paperwork. Um, my, my older brothers and sisters, yeah, they all filed the proper paperwork. They took the time. Um, and we, it, it was not easy. It took a long time. Yeah. You know, we came in the 19, like I came to the U.S. in 1981, my brother in 84. My brother became a citizen, I think, after 2000. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how long it took. But, you know, they put the effort in, and that's what we want. And it shows your determination. You want to be there and be productive, not you just want to be there and get, get benefits. 
right? Mm. Um, I was looking at your Instagram here, though, and I want to talk about a certain picture I saw in here because I thought it was so unique. Ah, yeah, continue. Sorry, that's my documentary. This is Facebook. Uh, maybe it signed you up. Oh, the, it's just it's just Facebook. Um, making sure everyone's logged in. So yeah. look, let's scroll down here real quick. It was one where you were eating, eating, or there was like people at a restaurant. I think that's the one. Where it go? Come on. It was one picture down here, and I want to ask you where were you when you took that picture because the food okay. looks so good. <laughs> uh, where so where are the people? There's almost there. That's you in the blue. So it's almost up. No, that's. <laughs> where, there's so many. <laughs> I, sh I, sh I should have had this ready. I should have had this ready. It's okay. Uh, I'm trying oh, to think oh, which picture you mean. It, it's got this old woman with a white hat. And it's right before that one. Right before the old woman with the white hat, there's another picture of a food. Oh, it might be. Is the one where I'm hugging the old lady? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I miss that? Yeah, Is that, that that's back up. You, you went back. Yeah, you went past. past that. It's a. Uh, it's a restaurant near. I'll. I'll wait to get the picture. Up. Oh, the there she is. The left side. Yeah. See this one? Here's this one. The orange. Uh... Lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then. Yeah. The... Um... Talk about this. <laughs> I was. I was really drunk on that picture. Um. <laughs> It's a it's a bar restaurant near here. So, have you ever been to Enoshima? No, I have not. Okay, um, well, if you go to Enoshima Station, there's like a big street that leads up to the beach, and it's on that on that street. All right. It's like a really nice local place. When we first moved here back in May, just May this year, we just mm. went there for lunch and then again for dinner. And then mm. it's always like the same people who go there, so it's quite local. But there, the food there is really good. Their Teishoku meals are just so mm. nice. Yeah, and then there's this picture here, one of my favorite kinds of shellfish, right here. Yeah, that was the first time I tried that. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, They're this amazing. This was like a, a sunset barbecue we had on Enoshima Beach. A um, mm. bunch of people just, well, they invited us at the last minute, and we're really, really glad that they, uh, there's just like a slideshow of, of pictures from that barbecue, too. Okay. Cool. Um, and they were really generous. Like, obviously, we gave them some money, and they... Uh, like prepared exactly. everything. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <coughs> so, have you found the food in Japan agreeable to you? Yeah, I like most of it. Um, I'm not a fan of like wasabi or uh, natto, but apart from that, I can eat pretty much everything. <laughs> How about you? I, I'm pretty. I don't like slimy food. It it has oh, nothing yeah. to do with the taste. It has nothing to do with the taste. It has to do with the fact that my brother used to torture me by doing the hanging saliva to your face kind of thing. Ew. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's, it's a it's a boy's thing, right? He would he would also do that touching his own eye thing, you know. It's just my brother. Um, I love him, but you know, it's just brotherly things. He just traumatized um, you from yeah. trying slimy food forever. And I, I found I found this this is what it's here in your um Poppy in Japan with the ramen and stuff like that. The little old lady with the white hat too. Oh, okay. That's actually a stock image, believe it or not. Really? Oh. Yeah, that's. I didn't take that. Yeah, I was so. surprised. It looks like a really natural picture, doesn't it? Yeah. It yeah, does. I'll usually use. I'll use stock images where I can't use my own. Yeah, and it's understandable. Um, no, I actually I enjoy natto very much, but the way that right, I it's eat, so healthy. I yeah. wish I liked it. It's so no, healthy. I eat it about once a week now. I I am actually cutting back on a lot of stuff because I'm actually losing weight. Um, and I know people go, it's healthy, but I tend to overdo it. Um, the way that I've gotten around the slimy, slimy factor is that I don't mix it. I will just open the container and spoon it out and eat it. Now, people who don't like it, I do recommend you try it a different way, which is called natto pasta. Which is um, you fry. Why would you ruin pasta? Why would you ruin pasta with natto? You fry the natto. It, uh, it actually it actually makes it more like a, well you're you're you you lived in the UK you're British. Uh, it's like beans and toast. I don't like beans and toast. Really? Wow. I know everyone freaks out. I don't like beans like the beans from the can are just no. No, not, not, I, love no beans. I, I, I love green beans. I love mame. I love 
like beans well, I, that I, I hate beans from the cans. I hate beans from the cans. Yeah. No. Um, make your own beans. <laughs> it's not. It's not that hard, people. It's not that hard to make your own beans. Put them in water overnight and boil them. Not that hard. Um, <clears throat> but the cans I, easier, Jim. I know the cans easier, um, <laughs> but it's also more expensive and harder to keep for a long time. Now, I come from a Latin background, and beans are a staple, so that's probably why I like it. Right, um, of course. There are black beans stuff, are good. Oh, black beans are amazing. Kidney beans. They really are on on burrito. Um, I don't like goya, of course. I don't like bitter. Cucumber. It's okay with tuna. That's the only. That's the only time I've been able to eat goya is if it's with I don't like, just like it in tuna. Any way, any any possible concoction that you can cook it in, I don't like it. Um, <laughs> I, it's bitter. I don't like bitter food. Yeah, bitter it is. Um, and let's see what else don't do I get along with in Japan. I don't like okra, but that's just because I don't like okra in the U.S. either. I never liked okra in my entire life. It's one of those foods that I will avoid. Um, I do find it hard to find spicy food in Japan. Have you found it hard to find spicy food? Yeah. Um, if it's a Japanese food, yeah. Like some Indian restaurants will spice it up if you ask them to. But yeah, they'll be like, this is the spiciest version of ramen. Are you sure? And you're like, it's spicy, but it's not like as yeah, bad as they yeah. hyped it up. Yeah. yeah, I love spicy food though. There's there's a place where I live. It uh, well, you you've lived in in Nagano before. There's a place called uh, Takato, um, Takato Castle, Takato Jo. Um, near there, there's a ramen shop that said it's the spiciest food. No one will ever be able to eat this if you can finish it in under 20 minutes. There's a picture on the wall. Uh, my picture's on there twice because I finished two in under 20 minutes. I was like, <laughs> this is mild. You show off. It's you mild. Off. It was mild. No, I could probably finish it too, maybe. I, I've never been there though. It's so crazy. You live right near where I used to live. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I bought my house here because it's quiet, and the mountains remind me of Santa Barbara, where I grew up. So, I, I like the mountains. Yeah, I love the mountains. I love the beach too. I I do miss surfing. I do miss surfing. Uh, do you surf? My husband surfs. I don't. You have to do surfing. Come on, try it. I'm scared. <clears throat> I tried to once, and I, it just it was scary. Um. Did you try it with a long board or you try it with a, a short little board? It might have been a short board. I can't even remember. Yeah, what usually for beginners, when I when I was starting, a long board is what they recommend. <clears throat> but I found the long board, while it's easier to get catch the wave, it's scarier. Um, it's so, gigantic. Yeah. So what I ended up doing was I ended up doing bodyboarding with a little board, right? A little boogie board. And once I got comfortable with that, I was able to get onto a, a short board. So it was a lot of fun. A oh, lot more, okay. I was about to say funner. Wow. My <laughs> <laughs> it's it was a lot more fun. fun. It was a lot more fun than it was with the long board. I ended up trading my long board for a short board. Uh, right there on the All beach, right. I, was like, I was like, give me your board, I give you mine. Okay. And we traded right on the beach. So, really? Yeah. That's this brilliant. was back in Ibaragi, uh, which is cold water. It's just cold. Um, all right. Um, give us one more topic real quick here. You've got your first book out. Your next book is coming out soon. Yes. Um, how many books do you think is doable for you to do on your own for your own series per year? How many can you do? Um, I'm Maybe I'm going to try to aim for like two or three a year. But this is not a series. Oath is a standalone. It might have a sequel, but I haven't written it all out yet. So I don't want to promise people a sequel. So for now, it's a standalone. And it might have some origin stories, but again, not fully decided. So for, yeah, for now, it's just a standalone. And I've also got a, one I'm already writing as well. So I'm hoping for two or three a year. But because my job is writing, mm -hmm. when I've written five or 6,000 words, for a client the last thing i want to do in the evening is sit down and write so it's quite hard for me to although i i do make time for it but i can't write out thousands of words of my own stuff a day unless i've got no projects which rarely happens mm. very yeah. very good well everyone thank you very much for joining us here at go in the now international thank you poppy for joining us and please Thanks, catch had a really good time thanks Good. And please catch her, the trailer to her, her book release, which is called A Bard's Lament, right after, right after we finish here. You guys have a good one, and please remember, it's always time to go indie now.
¿Hace cuánto tiempo estás aquí en New York? Unas semanas. Yo estoy aquí buscando una chica que se llama Isabel. Somos hermanas. ¿Y ella trabaja como escort? Sí. ¿Dónde está Isabel? She needs me. Now you have to figure out your priorities. I know you've been running around trying to find your sister, but you can't help anyone else if you're a mess. I feel very self-conscious about my body. Sometimes I'm just even scared to talk. My voice is so masculine. I know exactly where you're going to. Everything you've done, I'll do. You have a lot to get through, you know. I need to find her first. The longer you wait, the harder it's gonna get. You know, I think you like knocking guys out. If it means getting her back, I won't stop. We adapt, you know. Or we create something new. Let you let go of you. I'm trying. To find her, let go. Thank you.